Welcome to our channel, Game of Paddle. Today's video is about paddle game rules. Do you know what the paddle game is and how it's played? Paddle has its own rules and official regulations, depicting how the game is played. In this video, you'll learn about the rules of paddle tennis. It's possible that the rules of paddle will make you think that it's a complicated game, but after you've learnt the rules, you'll realise it's a very fun game. Today, we'd like to give you some pointers about paddle game rules. So let's get started. Rule number one, the court and net size. The paddle court is a playing field in rectangular shape. The width of the court is 10 meters and the length of the court is 20 meters. A net is at in the middle of the field and it separates the two sides of the game. The court is enclosed by walls from all sides. The walls are three to four meters high, which can normally be used in the Radley, just like squash. The net must be 10 meters long and 0.88 meters high at the center, rising to 0.92 meters at the ends. The surface of the paddle court is made up of cement, synthetic material, or grass, where a ball can have a regular bounce. Artificial lights are also installed and provided on the court so the players, coaches and audience can easily see the game. Rule number two, scoring the game. Scoring the game is counted as follows. Points in the game are 15, 30, 40 game. Winning four points make up a game. When both players are tied on 40, the player with the two point advantage is the winner. Set. A player wins a set after winning six games with a minimum of a two point lead. Match. To win a match, a player or team must win two out of three sets. Juice. Once tied at 40-40, the game must be won by a player slash team winning two consecutive points. Tiebreak. If the set score is 6-6, whoever wins the tiebreak set is the winner. The tiebreak game lasts until one side has seven points or more and is at least two points ahead of the other. Rule three, time intervals and changes. The time intervals and changes in the game are made as follows. In the first and third games, players change ends. In between points, there can be no more than 20 second break. When players change ends, they can take 90 seconds break. When a tie break takes place, players will switch ends after every six points. In tie breaks, players change ends and they can take 20 seconds rest. At the end of a set, players are allowed to take a break of two minutes. Rule number four, position of players. Each pair of players will be on either side of the court the player who is serving will serve the ball into play cross court and the opposing player positioned diagonally will return the ball. The player who receives can be in any part of their side of the court, as can their partner and the server's partner. All players must be within the court surroundings positioned on their side of the court for the point to start. Rule number five, paddle service. All points begin with a serve. If the first serve is not valid, the server is allowed a second serve. In paddle, the server has two chances on each point to serve. If the server misses the first serve, he can have a second serve. Once he has missed the second chance, it counts as a double fault and he loses the point and you move to the other side. The serve must be served cross court. The following are service rules. The first point of the match is always placed from the right side of the court. The server changes side after every point until the game is over. The server will serve for the entire game and the receiver will change after every point. 
Players must serve under arm and below waist height. The server has two chances for a successful serve. A player who is serving must stand behind the service line and receivers can stand wherever they want. The serve must land diagonally on the other side of the net within the receiver's service box. Receivers cannot return the ball until the ball bounces. Rule 6. Service faults. A server is considered as faulty when the server violates any of the rules of paddle serves. When trying to strike the ball, the server misses it. The ball bounces outside the receiver's service box. Any object worn or carried by or by the server or his partners is hit by the ball. Before the ball bouncing twice, it hits the metallic fence around the court after having bounced in the receiver's service box. Rule 7. Service return. Receivers must wait for the ball to bounce within their receiving box of service before hitting it and before it hits the ground for a second time. In the first game of each set, the receiving player decides who will be the first to receive. That player will continue receiving the first service of each game until the end of the set. When the order is decided, it cannot be changed during the set or tiebreak, but may be changed at the beginning of a new set. When the ball hits one of the receiving players or their racket, before it bounces, the servers get a point. Rule number eight, let a net service. A serve is considered as net if the ball serve touches the net or the supporting posts and then lands in the receiver's service box as long as it does not touch the metallic fence before the second bounce. The ball, after touching the net or posts, hits any player or item carried or worn. A service is considered as a let if the ball is served when the receiver is not ready. A server is entitled to two serves if it's a let on the first serve. Rule number nine, repetitions. A point in the dispute is a let if the ball splits during the game. Any element not part of the game enters the court area. In general, any interruption to the match due to the situations not related to the players causes a let. Rule number 10, interference. Interference is when a player either intentionally or unintentionally distracts an opponent during the point. The umpire will decide if it's a deliberate interference and will award the point to the opponent or an unintentional intentional interference and a let will be called and the point repeated. Rule number 11. Ball in play. Once a legal service is made, the ball will remain in play until a let is called or the point is determined. After the ball has bounced on the opponent's side, if it hits any part of the court, it will remain in play and should be returned before it bounces again. A court consists of the inside of the walls, the metallic mesh fence surrounding it, the ground, the net, and the posts that hold the net in place. The mesh and frame collectively will be considered as part of the fence. Rule number 12, losing a point. A player will lose a point if, when the ball is in play and players, their rackets, or any other stuff worn touches the opponent's side or net. Before the return of a ball, a second bounce of the ball occurs. When the ball crosses the outer boundary of a court after bouncing, players hit the ball before the ball crosses the net. In the event a player returns a ball directly to their side of the court or off the walls, the ball touches the net, net posts, fence or any element not related to on the ground of the opponent's court. Players hit the ball twice. The ball touches the players or anything they're wearing. Players jump over the net while in the game 
when players serve two consecutive faults. Rule number 13. Correct return. Returns are correct if a ball is struck and bounces directly into the opposing court or it hits the wall on the player's own court before bouncing into the opponent's court. The ball bounces on the opponent's court and then strikes a wall or metallic fence. After touching the net or net posts, the ball lands on the opponent's court. The ball in play hits an object on the ground of the opponent's court that is not connected to the part of the court. When the ball is pushed, it will be considered a correct return as long as the player has not hit it twice. Rule number 14. Winning points. If the ball bounces in the opponent's court and then goes out of the court through a hole in the metallic fence or becomes caught there, the ball gets caught on a flat surface on top of the wall after it bounces in the opponent's court. Rule number 15. Change of balls. Organisers must announce the brand and type of balls and two to three balls must be used in the paddle game. At the start of a set, balls can be changed if the ball condition has deteriorated and the umpire agrees to change it. Teaching, watching paddle video, coaching videos, playing with better players and watching WPT matches are the most effective way to learn more about the game and how it is best played. We hope you enjoyed watching our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos about paddle.